Now, take a look at this place. It looks absolutely stunning. We're in the middle of this huge, huge bog. And this bog has all those little trees and ponds. And because we're here so early in the morning, the whole place is covered in fog. And that looks just fantastic. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some tips and techniques to capture the best sunrise shots possible. Now, to make this recording, I had to wake up at 3.30 a.m., drive all the way here, hike into the bog, and here we are, just in time for sunrise. And the reason I picked this specific morning was because the previous day was really hot and the night was calm and cold, so we have a clear sky. Obviously, we need a clear sky if we want to see the sunrise. But also, it was really important to me that there would be no wind, because if this was a windy morning, or if there was any wind at all, all the fog would be blown away, so it wouldn't work. But this morning, we have those perfect conditions. We have a perfectly clear sky, we have this fog all around us, and I can't wait to start taking photos. Now, if you look at the scene that's right in front of me, you're gonna immediately see that we have that incredible fog everywhere. And I'm looking at this through my 1X, my wide angle lens. Now, another thing you're gonna notice is that we have this road that forms a strong leading line. You also see that we have those two ponds in the bog and the road just happens to snake right through them in a perfect S shape. It is early in the morning and this is a low light situation. So any movement or any camera shake in a low light like this can potentially result in a blurry photo. So you gotta be really careful with that. I'm gonna hold my iPhone as still as I can to make sure that I reduce that movement and get the sharpest image I can possibly get here. All right, so now that I'm happy with this composition, I'll go ahead and press the shutter. Now, I like this photo we just got on this side, but as I look to my left, there's something incredible going on there as well. Now, if I open up the camera of my iPhone, you'll see that here we have a similar setup. So once again, we have two lakes that are kind of distributed diagonally in the frame. So I have one at the top left and one at the bottom right. And I have that road that snakes through in between those legs. So this composition is quite similar to what we had on the other side. And yet it's different enough where I think it's worth capturing both images. So I'm gonna carefully frame up the shot and I'm gonna make sure that I don't cut any of that lake on the left out. And I'm gonna go ahead and press that shutter. Okay, so now we've captured these shots. I think we have about maybe 10, 15 minutes until the sunrise, not more than that, but I don't wanna waste any time. So let's head downstairs. Okay, so I've just walked down that tower and literally right in front of me, we have that same road that we were looking at from above, but now I'm much closer to it. And a road like this, just like at the top, it's made for a great leading line. When I'm down here at the ground level, it still makes for a great leading line. And I think that looks really good. So I'm gonna quickly frame up the shot and I'm gonna have that road be placed centrally in my frame. And I like how it makes the subtle curve right in front of me and then kind of extends more to the right. So that to me makes an interesting shot. So I'm gonna carefully frame this up and I'm gonna press the shutter. I do see my foreground and my middle ground, but the background is in the fog, and that adds mystery to this photo, or any photos we're gonna capture while that fog is still here. So let's keep moving, and let's see what else we can find here. Now, one of the things that make this bog really interesting are those little ponds. And on a quiet morning like this, they are perfectly still. So they create those beautiful mirror-like reflections. And if I frame up the shot right here, you'll see that in front of me, I have those two trees. I can create the kind of shot where those two trees are perfectly reflected in that calm water. So I'm looking for a very symmetrical composition here. I wanna make sure I leave roughly the same amount of space in all corners of my frame. And now that I have a nice symmetrical shot, I'll go ahead and press the shutter. Okay. 
Now here, I've found this dead tree that I think is gonna make for a really interesting subject. Now, when I'm working with a subject like this tree, my goal is to isolate that subject. So how can I do it? Well, that fog actually is gonna help me quite a bit because if I'm standing relatively close to that tree and then there's fog behind the tree, what's gonna happen is that the fog is gonna help me isolate my subject. And indeed, if we frame up the shot, that's what we get here. Once again, I'm gonna carefully adjust my position. I also like that little tree at the bottom left of the frame. It's just a nice addition to the composition. So now that I'm happy with where the tree is placed, I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter. But now if I look over my shoulder there, that sun has literally just come out. So we're gonna go back to the tower and take those same shots again, this time with that beautiful sunrise light. All right, we're back at the tower now. So let me show you what the same shots are gonna look like now, once that sun has come above the horizon. All right, so if I frame up the first shot, the 1X, you're gonna see that the sun actually complements the scene nicely. So we have that road extending into the distance diagonally across the frame. And at the top left-hand corner, we have that beautiful morning sun. So before anything changes, I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot. I think this is more of a 2x scene, so I'm gonna to switch to my 2x view. As I do that, now I'm getting much closer to those lakes and to that road. I'm gonna be careful about how I frame this. I wanna make sure that I show that bog extending into the distance as far as I can, but at the same time, I don't wanna include that sky. So I wanna create the impression that this bog never ends. I'm happy with the frame I have here, and I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter again. Now, as I was standing here, literally right in front of my eyes, that fog started to become more dense. And right now, from this vantage point, I no longer get a good shot because that whole scene, it's just pretty much gone in the fog now. So what I'm gonna do now is head back down and explore the bog some more. something really interesting going on. We have this beautiful spider web and because of all that fog in the morning, actually all the wires of the spider web, they're full of water and that water really stands out. So let me show you. Now, as I frame this up, you'll immediately see we have that incredible spider web. What I'm gonna do is adjust my framing just a little bit. You'll see that if I'm down lower and if I have that sky behind the spider web, then it kind of disappears. There's just too much brightness, too much light behind the spider web. But if I move my iPhone up a little bit, just a little bit, just like this, see that now I've framed the spider web so that the background is gonna be in the shadow and that way it stands out more. So I'm gonna go for a central composition here and once I'm happy with the framing, I'll go ahead and press the shutter. And that looks absolutely beautiful. Right, so here we have yet another spot where that road creates a really strong leading line. But this one is just a little bit different. We've already captured leading line shots of this road. But the reason I like this spot right here is because we also have those handrails. So we have that road making an S curve in front of me and it comes with those handrails. And now that the sun is just a little bit higher above the horizon, actually those handrails start to become illuminated in an interesting way. So if I frame up the shot, you're gonna see that we have those shadows and we have those highlights on those handrails and on that path. Now behind it, there's also that huge sun and it is a bit more of a distraction in this frame. So I'm gonna reframe the image to exclude that sun. And if I move my iPhone just a bit higher and if I shoot it from a higher vantage point, actually it becomes easier to eliminate that sun. Once again, I'm looking for the kind of shot that's gonna lead the eye of the viewer from the foreground into the background, into that fog, 
towards that sunrise. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter right here. Now at this point, we walk quite a bit away from the tower and the sun is already higher above the horizon. But I wanna make sure I get another photo from the top of that tower before the fog is completely gone. So let's head back. All right, so we're now back on the top of that tower again. This time the sun is higher above the horizon. And once again, we're gonna get a completely different shot. Now it's not ideal because we have that huge overexposed area in the sky, but on the other hand, we have that incredible fog and I wanna capture that. So I'll go ahead and press the shutter anyway. Now, if I switch to my 2X view, I can then reframe the shot to not include that sun in the sky at all. And now that looks absolutely stunning because the more I have that fog that extends in the distance in the frame, I think the more interesting the shot gets. So right about here is where I can frame it. And I'll go ahead and press the shutter here as well. But now let's check out the other side of this tower to see what kind of shots we can capture there. Okay, so here we already have a different scene. You notice that almost all the fog is now gone and you can start to see those bright green tones in that bug, which we didn't have before. Once again, I'm gonna quickly adjust the framing and once I'm happy with my framing, I'll press the shutter. Now, if you look at this shot, it does look good, but the reason we came to this bog was to show you that beautiful fog. It looks like now, the fog is almost completely gone. But because we woke up early, because we came here before the sunrise and for those first rays of light, we had that incredible fog that we could use to isolate our subjects from the background and create those really beautiful, really special, really moody images. Now, I know it's not easy to get up so early, but there are two golden hours each day. One is in the evening and the other one is in the morning. And most photographers only shoot the evening golden hour because it's so much easier. But if you can actually get up for sunrise, the photos you'll be able to capture during that time are going to be truly spectacular. This video was a free preview of my iPhone Photo Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to take stunning photos with your iPhone. So if you'd like to take the kind of photos that will leave your friends and family speechless, please take a look at the full version of iPhone Photo Academy. You'll find a link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.